here is a, a project to start for for the structure so we start first with the new and the template that we will see this construction template by default uh, we need to make sure that it is structural template so click on structural template and okay so I'll build a simple four four story building steel structure and we'll do the the modeling in Revit and after that we'll export it to Robo structure analysis for analysis and design. So let's start with the uh, is to change the uh, height here to four meters, four thousand millimeters, and then we'll add extra levels. So go to structure, then we have level, and I prefer to use offset. Click on this, and then set the offset. The offset for each floor I was assumed to be three thousand millimeters and then start to add them one and the second I say this is the third skip skip so go back to level two and not analytical for the physical model so double click on this now I'd like to have uh, the 3d also visible so uh, you want to uh, uh, hit uh, WT for tiling so that more than one so we have for D and this is for three maybe I'll switch them and make this level two and, uh, so I make this level two then I'll add WT There you go. All right, so let's start with the levels here. Sorry, let's start with the. Good. So we'll have number uh, here. Then I'll use again the grid and I'll use offset. Um, I'll make my offset 4500 and then start to add here two, three, four. Then the other direction, I'll have one. I'll make sure to change this to alphabetic A. Then I'll skip, skip, then I'll, uh, I'll go back to. Good, and then I'll use again offset and make the distances 8500. I'll offset this to 8500, 8500, 8500. I keep it simple like that and uh, try to center these in the middle so that your views will be okay. Seems to be fine. So now we'll start with the we'll start with the columns. So we've got structures and then we go columns. And for columns you see most of the columns here, they are universal type of columns which I don't use most of the time. I prefer to use uh, metric wide flange, so I need to go to load family. So once you go to load family you have to start at Let's go back to the origin here. So go to libraries. It is in my laptop. It is on Autodesk. So uh, the Autodesk will have. Uh, you might have twenty three, twenty two. So you need to click on RLT. Double click libraries, and then it is English. I'm not using Imperial American. And when you get to the American, if you are doing column C. You will see structural columns, but if you are using beams, you have to go to structural framing. So these are different than the, if you used a uh, wrong one, it will give you an error. So we start with columns now, double click on it. And we are using steel, double click. And I am using wide, metric wide flange. So this is metric wide flange, double click it. And assuming I'm interested in the 310, 
section. Or 360. Say 360, 196. I'm choosing this one. You can choose a group of them if you want to, but I prefer to do one at a time. So now the column selected is metric wide flange column 360, 196, as you can see here. And you see also here, it says uh, first click level one, second click is this. So we we go to columns. Well, so it goes level two. So it, it is goes down to level two depth. We are at level one. It goes down to level two. So I would rather use uh, at grid. So if I say so, this is again go back to column, and I have this column. So I'll use at grid. And I'll choose from this until here. As you can see here, I already have all of these columns here. So if you enlarge this, you'll see the, even the rotation, the direction of these columns. If you agree, if you find this to be suitable, click on finish, and it is done. Now we need to add skip, skip to go out of, to get out of the column command. Now we need beams, so if you click on beams, and then again, these are all universal beams. So again, if you see the concrete and universal beams, which I am not interested in, so I'll go to load family. Beams. And I will load family. And again, see, this is, we are in the, in the beam, in the column. That is not going to work, so you have to go back to the beam framing one. And framing is US. Then you have to go structural framing. See here, structural framing. Double click, steel. And then again, well, metric wide flange is what we are after. Metric double click. And then assuming that I'm interested in 460, 460, 177, for example. So now I can start my assigning my beams and longitude and direction. See, this chain has to be checked in. So start from this point, to this point, to this point, to this point. And escape, escape. I would like to repeat this throughout all of these lines. So instead of doing them manual at a time, I will uh, select them, copy and paste them. So this is first one, control. The second one, control, add this one. Now I'll do multiple copy. The origin is this, to this, to this, to this. And as you can see, it is updating the 3D. Escape, escape. So see, this is the 3D. Now I'll do the other direction. The other direction beams will be shorter or be weaker. So again, I go to beam and again to load family. I'll look for something that is 250. Now, because I'm already in the beam selection, so I don't need to go back all the way. I will continue with metric wide flange and then create it already beam. So for beam, I'm looking for 250, 250, uh, 250, 167. So, okay, that is the beam. So what I'll do is from again, this point to this point. Again, the chain is on, keep in mind to uh, this point, to this point, to this point. And escape, escape. Now I'll copy and paste all of these to the other. So I'll uh, pick this, control this, control this, control this, then paste them to multiple copy from this point to this point to this point to this point skip skip so as you can see my 3d is updating so I, meaning i i would like you to see what exactly is happening here so i did my columns and beams so now i would need i would need to do my concrete snap so go to 
floors click on it and choose structure okay choose structure then you can use support here pick support and you have this support and this support and before i do this let me just cancel this uh, yes so uh, when when i click on on floor i got this one this is structure whatever so let me go and edit this one because this is i don't want to be 300 what the hell is this i need this to be concrete so first of all let me cancel this and i'll do back here Need structure so i need to go generic so this is generic so i'm going to edit so for this one there's 300 millimeter concrete so first of all i need to duplicate this to my to my so it will be a concrete slab slab there's 200 millimeters say okay that is the name so i need to edit the properties here so uh edit it is extremely important to make sure to change this category because it says it doesn't it is, there's no material assigned to this to this slab so i need to, to define it for it click on these ellipses and you get this selection type conk and you'll get concrete you can use concrete grade 35 and above for the concrete cast in place 35 and click ok now you fix the thickness this is the thickness so make it 200 and ok so this should be the and apply if you will or ok it'll be same so you get this concrete slab which is 200 millimeters now i will go to uh, supports pick support so this is my first support second support third and fourth and i connect them with the trim command this one and this one and this one and this one and this one so it is connected but i need to make sure that this concrete slab is sitting on 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 the top of the steel because if i leave it like that it will be flush with the top of the uh, beam flange at the top so i have to make the offset here the thickness of the slab which is 200 in this case now i click ok accept so i got this one now i can switch this to to any elevation or side of you and see the concrete slab so you see it is sitting on top of the concrete if i would if i were not to put the 200 offset this would have been flush with this face okay so back to okay we don't need this line this is just to show you there's a concrete slab and here okay click i just escape so i need to be able to select with the by face so okay okay so now we have our concrete and we have our beams and columns now we need to uh, we need to do the supports and apply loads now these keep in mind these are the physical models so we need to to generate the uh, the analytical model so if you go to the analytical model click on it there's nothing here so back to this so we need to generate the analytical model here. and how do we generate the analytical model is is you have to go to analyze this is the difference between 23 24 and 22 you have to go to um, analytical automation so when you click on this and then choose the entire thing here So it says select here. So ours is from physical to analytical. Physical to analytical, this is one. And now we select. So we do this, the entire thing. And we say run. So it will convert this physical model to analytical model. This was not, this was automatically done in 22, but in the 24, we have to do this manually. okay so now close this and now if you double click on the analytical model you'll see analytical model this was generated because of the automation now once we get the this analytical model 
I don't need this one anymore. So I'll, okay. So what I need to do here is I need to to provide with supports here, and then start doing loading. So first of all, I need, I need to go to analyze. And with and when you get to analyze, there's something called boundary conditions. So click on boundary condition, you'll see point line area, and there is here fixed also. So you can choose fixed support, hinge or pinned and roller, or custom. So we'll always the default to fix, we'll use fix. So this will be the first, this will be the second, and you make sure to assign them manually. And I'm not aware of any method in which you can <clears throat> choose the entire thing and, and assign them support. But if you know of any, just let me know here. So I have to go into all of these one by one. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Escape, escape. So go back. Now we need to load. So to load, you have to click on loads. When you click on loads, you have these loads, but before you do loads, you have to go to analyze to assign the loads. So if you see the structure analytical model here, and you click on it, you see load cases, load combination, and boundary. We start with load cases, <clears throat> what cases we have. We don't have seismic, so we'll keep it for now. I mean, the temperature accidental, we don't need them. We don't, we're going to delete them. Just leave dead load and live load. Then you can go to load combination. And for load combination, we have two types of combination. The ultimate, which is factor load. It is called ultimate. I'm going to call it ultimate one. And there is the working. This is, with, this is one that does, does not have any factors the loads are not factored and make sure to go to where it says serviceability click on it there will be an arrow make it ultimate leave this as serviceability and choose for example the ultimate the ultimate has will add loads because you have only two types of load dead load and live load and for ultimate with the based on the canadian standard this is 1.25 for dead for dead load and it is 1.5 for live load and then go to the working. The working has only dead load and live load, which they are not factored. And I click OK. So now we have our two load combinations. OK. The ultimate and working. I click OK. Now we go to loads. And if you look at loads here, you see there's area load and on host so we always use on host and here you see the load units are kilonewton per square meter so it is on the whole area and it is dead load so for dead load assuming the dead load now again i'm not going to details of loading for now assume this is two kilonewton per per square meter so just click on the slab itself and it will load that for you then go and change this to live load uh, live load say live load is three here for example and apply this also so this means it is applied escape escape applied to the entire slab now this is ready for analysis now we created this model and and, and love it i have to export this to to robot so if you have already installed robot click on robot here and robot structure analysis link click on it accept this is a sending model and direct integration so okay so it will go on an open robot structure analysis for you and at that point this is the first part of the uh our video so second part will be dealing with click no we don't need to say detail the second part will be uh dealing with robot structure analysis this one